Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the final video of this series, the 2018 to 2022 Technician Class Amateur Radio Question Pool. This video will cover sub-element T9A, T9B, and T0. My name is Michael Dickerson, KC9PHK, and again, thank you and welcome on behalf of the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club located in southeastern Illinois. Sub-element T9 covers antenna and feed lines. Two exam questions come from the two groups located in this sub-element. First off, T9A, antennas, vertical and horizontal polarization, concept of gain, common portable and mobile antennas, relationships between resonant length and frequency, concept of dipole antennas. T9A01, what is a beam antenna? A. An antenna built from aluminum I-beams. B. An omnidirectional antenna invented by Clarence Beam. C. An antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. Or D. An antenna that reverses the phase of received signals. Correct answer is C. An antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. T9A02. Which of the following describes a type of antenna loading? A. Inserting an inductor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it electrically longer. B. Inserting a resistor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it resonant. C. Installing a spring in the base of a mobile vertical antenna to make it more flexible. D. Strengthening the radiating elements of a beam antenna to better resist wind damage. Correct answer is A. Inserting an inductor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it electrically longer. Which of the following describes a simple dipole oriented parallel to the Earth's surface? A. A ground wave antenna. B. A horizontally polarized antenna. C. A rhombic antenna. Or D. A vertically polarized antenna. Correct answer is B. A horizontally polarized antenna. T9A04. What is a disadvantage of the rubber duck antenna supplied with most handheld radio transceivers when compared to a full-sized quarter wave antenna? A. It does not transmit or receive as effectively. B. It transmits only circularly polarized signals. C. If the rubber end cap is lost, it will unravel very easily. Or D. All of these choices are correct correct answer is A. It does not transmit or receive as effectively. T9A05. How would you change a dipole antenna to make it resonant on a higher frequency? A. Lengthen it. B. Insert coils in series with radiating wires. C. Shorten it. D. Add capacitive loading to the ends of the radiating wires. Correct answer is C. Shorten it. T9A06, what type of antennas are the quad, yagi, and dish? A. Non-resident antennas. B. Log periodic antennas. C. Directional antennas. Or D. Isotropic antennas. Correct answer is C. Directional antennas. T9A07, what is a disadvantage of using a handheld VHF transceiver with its integral antenna inside a vehicle? A. Signals might not propagate well due to the shielding effect of the vehicle. B. It might cause the transceiver to overheat. C. The SWR might decrease, decreasing the signal strength. Or D. All of these choices are correct. The correct answer is A. Signals might not propagate well due to the shielding effect of the vehicle. T9A08, what is the approximate length in inches of a quarter wavelength vertical antenna for 146 megahertz? A, 112, B, 50, C, 19, or D, 12? Correct answer is C, 19. T9A09, what is the approximate length in inches of a half-wavelength 6-meter dipole antenna? 
A, 6, B, 50, C, 112, or D, 236? Correct answer is C, 112. T9A10, in which direction does a half-wave dipole antenna radiate the strongest signal? A, equally in all directions. B, off the ends of the antenna. C, broadside to the antenna. Or D, in the direction of the feed line. C, broadside to the antenna. T9A11, what is the gain of an antenna? A, the additional power that is added to the transmitter power. B, the additional power that is lost in the antenna when transmitting on a higher frequency. C, the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. The increase in impedance on receive or transmit compared to a reference antenna. Correct answer is C, the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. T9A12, what is an advantage of using a properly mounted 5 8 wave length antenna for VHF or UHF mobile service? A, it has a lower radiation angle and more gain than a quarter wave length antenna. B, it has very high angle radiation for better communicating through a repeater. C, it eliminates distortion caused by reflected signals. Or D, it has 10 times the power gain of a quarter wave length design. Correct answer is A. It has a lower radiation angle and more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna. T9B covers feed lines, types, attenuation versus frequency, selecting, SWR concepts, antenna tuners, couplers, RF connectors, selecting, and weather protection. T9B01, why is it important to have low SWR when using coaxial cable feed line? A, to reduce television interference. B, to reduce signal loss. C, to prolong antenna life. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B, to reduce signal loss. T9B02, what is the impedance of most coaxial cables used in amateur radio installations? A, 8 ohm. B, 50 ohms, C, 600 ohms, or D, 12 ohms. Correct answer is B, 50 ohms. T9B03, why is coaxial cable the most common feed line selected for amateur radio antenna systems? A, it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. B, it has less loss than any other type of feed line. C, it can handle more power than any other type of feed line. Or D, it is less expensive than other type of feed line. Correct answer is A, it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. T9B04, what is the major function of an antenna tuner, also known as an antenna coupler? A, it matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. B, it helps a receiver automatically tune in weak stations. C. It allows an antenna to be used on both transmit and receive. Or D. It automatically selects the proper antenna for the frequency band being used. Correct answer is A. It matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. T9B05. In general, what happens as the frequency of a signal passing through a coaxial cable is increased? A. The characteristic impedance decreases. B. The loss decreases. C, the characteristic impedance increases, or D, the loss increases? Correct answer is D, the loss increases. T9B06, which of the following connectors is most suitable for frequencies above 400 MHz? A, a UHF connector, also known as a PL259SO239. B, type N connector. C, an RS-213 connector, or D, a DB25 connector? The correct answer is B, a type N connector. T9B07, which of the following is true of PL259 type coax connectors? A, they are preferred for microwave operation. B, they are watertight. C, they are commonly used at HF frequencies. 
or D? They are a bayonet type connector. Correct answer is C. They are commonly used at HF frequencies. T9B08. Why should coax connectors exposed to weather be sealed against water intrusion? A. To prevent an increase in feed line loss. B. To prevent interference to telephone. C. To keep the jacket from becoming loose. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is A. To prevent an increase in feed line loss. T9B09. What can cause erratic changes in SWR readings? A. The transmitter is being modulated. B. A loose connection in an antenna or a feed line. C. The transmitter is being over modulated or D, interference from other stations is distorting your signal. Correct answer is B, a loose connection in an antenna or a feed line. T9B10, what is the electrical difference between RG58 and RG8 coaxial cable? A, there is no significant difference between the two types. B, RG58 cable has two shields. C. RG8 cable has less loss at a given frequency. D. RG58 cable can handle higher power levels. Correct answer is C. RG8 cable has less loss at a given frequency. T9B11. Which of the following types of feed line has the lowest loss at VHF and UHF? A. 50 ohm flexible coax. B. Multi-conductor unbalanced cable. C. Air insulated hard line or D, 75 ohm flexible coax? Correct answer is C, air insulated hard line. Sub-element T0, electrical safety, AC and DC power circuits, antenna installation, RF hazards. Three exam questions come from the three groups. T0A, power circuits and hazards, hazardous voltages, fuses and circuit breakers, grounding, lightning protection, battery safety, electrical code compliance. T0A01, which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12 volt storage battery? A. Touching both terminals with the hands can cause electrical shock. B. Shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. C. RF emissions from the battery. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. Shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. T0A02, what health hazard is presented by electrical current flowing through the body? A, it may cause injury by heating tissue. B, it may disrupt the electrical functions of cells. C, it may cause involuntary muscle contractions. Or D, all of these choices are correct. The correct answer is D, all of these choices are correct. T0A03. In the United States, what is connected to the green wire in a three-wire electrical AC plug? A. Neutral. B. Hot. C. Equipment ground. Or D. The white wire. Correct answer is C. Equipment ground. T0A04. What is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? A. To prevent power supply ripple from damaging a circuit. B. To interrupt power in case of overload. C. To limit current. To prevent shocks, or D, all of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B, to interrupt power in case of overload. T0A05. Why is it unwise to install a 20 ampere fuse in the place of a 5 ampere fuse? A, the larger fuse would be likely to blow because it is rated for higher current. B, the power supply ripple would greatly increase. C, excessive current could cause a fire. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C, excessive current could cause a fire. T0A06, what is a good way to guard against electrical shock in your station? A, use three wire cords and plugs for all AC powered equipment. B, connect all AC powered station equipment to a common safety ground. C, use a circuit protected by a ground fault interrupter. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. T0A07. Which of these precautions should be taken when installing devices for lightning protection in a coaxial cable feed line? A. Include a parallel bypass switch for each protector so that it can be switched off of the circuit when running high power. 
USB include a series switch in the ground line of each protector to prevent RF overload from inadvertently damaging the protector. C. Keep the ground wires from each protector separate and connected to station ground. Or D. Mount all of the protectors on a metal plate that is in turn connected to an external ground rod. Correct answer is D. Mount all of the protectors on a metal plate that is in turn connected to an external ground rod. T0A08. What safety equipment should always be included in home-built equipment that is powered from 120-volt AC power circuits? A. A fuse or circuit breaker in series with the AC hot conductor. B. An AC voltmeter across the incoming power source. C. An inductor in parallel with the AC power source. Or D. A capacitor in series with the AC power source. Correct answer is A. A fuse or circuit breaker in series with the AC hot conductor. T0A09, what should be done to all external ground rods or earth connections? A, waterproof them with silicone caulk or electrical tape. B, keep them as far apart as possible. C, bond them together with heavy wire or conductive strap. D, tune them for resonance on a the lowest frequency of operation. Correct answer is C, bond them together with heavy wire or conductive strap. T0A 10. What can happen if a lead acid storage battery is charged or discharged too quickly? A. The battery could overheat, give off flammable gas, or explode. B. The voltage can become reversed. C. The memory effect will reduce the capacity of the battery. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is A. The battery could overheat, give off flammable gas, or explode. T0A11. What kind of hazard might exist in a power supply when it is turned off and disconnected? A. Static electricity could damage the grounding system. B. Circulating currents inside the transformer might cause damage. C. The fuse might blow if you remove the cover. D. You might receive an electric shock from the charge stored in large capacitors. Correct answer is D. You might receive an electric shock from the charge stored in large capacitors. T0B. Antenna safety tower safety and grounding, erecting an antenna support, safely installing an antenna. T0B01. When should members of a tower work crew wear a hard hat and safety glasses? A. At all times except when climbing the tower. B. At all times except when belted firmly to the tower. C. At all times when any work is being done on the tower. Or D. Only when the tower exceeds 30 feet in height. Correct answer is C at all times when any work is being done on the tower. T0B02. What is a good precaution to observe before climbing an antenna tower? A. Make sure that you wear a grounded wrist strap. B. Remove all tower grounding connections. C. Put on a carefully inspected climbing harness, also known as a fall arrest, and safety glasses. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C. Put on a carefully inspected climbing harness, fall arrester, and safety glasses. T0B03. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? A. When no electrical work is being performed. B. When no mechanical work is being performed. C. When the work being done is not more than 20 feet above ground. Or D. Never. Correct answer is D. Never. T0B04, which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? A. Wear a ground strap connected to your wrist at all times. B. Insulate the base of the tower to avoid lightning strikes. C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. T0B05. What is the purpose of a gen pole? A. To temporarily replace guy wires. B. To be used in place of a safety harness. C. To lift tower sections or antennas. D. To provide a temporary ground. Correct answer is C. To lift tower sections or antennas. T0B06. What is the maximum safe distance from a power line to allow when installing an antenna? A. Half the width of your property. B. The height of the power line above ground. C. Half wavelength at the operating frequency. Or D. Enough so that if the antenna falls unexpectedly, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power lines.
correct answer D enough so that if the antenna falls unexpectedly, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power wires. T0B07. Which of the following is an important safety rule to remember when using a crank up tower? A. This type of tower must never be painted. B. This type of tower must never be grounded. C. This type of tower must not be climbed unless retracted or mechanical safety locking devices have been installed. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C. This type of tower must not be climbed unless retracted or mechanical safety locking devices have been installed. T0B08. What is considered to be a proper grounding method for a tower? A. A single four foot ground rod driven into the ground no more than 12 inches from the base. B. A ferrite core RF choke connected between the tower and ground. C. Separate 8 foot long ground rods for each tower leg bonded to the tower and each other. Or D. A connection between the tower base and a cold water pipe. Correct answer is C. Separate 8 foot long ground rods for each leg and then bonded to the tower and each other. T0B09. Why should you avoid attaching an antenna to a utility pole? A. The antenna will not work properly because of induced voltages. B. The utility company will charge you an extra monthly fee. C. The antenna could contact high voltage power lines. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C. The antenna could contact high voltage power lines. T0B10. Which of the following is true when installing grounding conductors used for lightning protection? A. Only non-insulated wire must be used. B. Wires must be carefully routed with precise right angle bends. C. Sharp bends must be avoided. Or D. Common grounds must be avoided. Correct answer is C. Sharp bends must be avoided. T0B11. Which of the following establishes grounding requirements for an amateur radio tower or antenna? A. FCC Part 97 rules. B. Local electrical codes. C. FAA tower lighting regulations. Or D. UL recommended practices. Correct answer is B. Local electrical codes. T0B12. Which of the following is good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection? A. Put a loop in the ground connection to prevent water damage to the ground system. B. Make sure all bends in the ground wires are clean right angle bends. C. Ensure that connections are short and direct. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is C. Ensure that connections are short and direct. T0B13, what is the purpose of a safety wire through a turnbuckle used to tension guy lines? A. Secure the guy if the turnbuckle breaks. B. Prevent loosening of the guy line from vibration. C. Prevent theft or vandalism. Or D. Deter unauthorized climbing of the tower. Correct answer is B. Prevent loosening of the guy line from vibrating. T0C, RF hazards, radiation exposure, proximity to antennas, recognized safe power levels. Exposure to others, radiation types, and duty cycles. T0C01. What type of radiation are VHF and UHF radio signals? A. Gamma radiation. B. Ionizing radiation. C. Alpha radiation. Or D. Non-ionizing radiation. Correct answer is D. Non-ionizing radiation. T0C02. Which of the following frequencies has the lowest value for maximum permissible exposure limit? A. 3.5 MHz. B. 50 MHz. C. 440 MHz. Or D. 1296 MHz. Correct answer is B. 50 MHz. T0. C03. What is the maximum power level that an amateur radio station may use at VHF frequencies before an RF exposure evaluation is required? A. 1500 watts PEP transmitter output. B. 1 watt forward power. C. 50 watts PEP at the antenna. D. 50 watts PEP reflected power. Correct answer is C. 50 watts PEP at the antenna. T0C04. What factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station antenna? A. Frequency and power level of the RF field. B. Distance from the antenna to a person. C. Radiation pattern of the antenna. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. 
T0, C05. Why do exposure limits vary with frequency? A. Lower frequency RF fields have more energy than higher frequency fields. B. Lower frequency RF fields do not penetrate the human body. C. Higher frequency RF fields are transient in nature. D. The human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than uh, at others. Correct answer is D. The human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than at others. T0C06, which of the following is an acceptable method to determine that your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? A. By calculation based on FCC OET Bulletin 65. B. By calculation based on computer modeling. C. By measurement of field strength using calibrated equipment. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. T0C07. What could happen if a person accidentally touched your antenna while you were transmitting? A. Touching the antenna could cause television interference. B. They might receive a painful RF burn. C. They might develop radiation poisoning. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. They might receive a painful RF burn. T0C08. Which of the following actions might amateur radio operators take to prevent exposure to RF radiation in excess of FCC supplied limits? A. Relocate antennas. B. Relocate the transmitter. C. Increase the duty cycle. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is A. Relocate the antennas. T0C09. How can you make sure your station stays in compliance with RF safety regulations? A. By informing the FCC of any changes made in your station. B. By reevaluating the station whenever an item of equipment is changed. C. By making sure your antennas have low SWR. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. By reevaluating the station whenever an item of equipment is changed. T0C10. Why is duty cycle one of the factors used to determine safe RF radiation exposure levels? A. It affects the average exposure of people to radiation. B. It affects the peak exposure of people to radiation. C. It takes into account the antenna feed line loss. Or D. It takes into account the thermal effects of the final amplifier. Correct answer is A. It affects the average exposure of people to radiation. T0C11. What is the definition of duty cycle during the averaging time of RF exposure? A. The difference between the lowest power output and the highest power output of a transmitter. B. The difference between the PEP and average power output of a transmitter. C. The percentage of time that a transmitter is transmitting. Or D. The percentage of time that a transmitter is not transmitting. Correct answer is C. The percentage of time that a transmitter is transmitting. T0C12. How does RF radiation differ from ionizing radiation, radioactivity? A. RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause genetic damage. B. RF radiation can only be detected with an RF dosimeter. C. RF radiation is limited in range to a few feet. Or D. RF radiation is perfectly safe. Correct answer is A. RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause genetic damage. T0C13. If the averaging time for exposure is 6 minutes, how much power density is permitted if the signal is present for 3 minutes and absent for 3 minutes rather than being present for the entire 6 minutes? A. 3 times as much. B. Half as much. C. 2 times as much. D. There is no adjustment allowed for shorter exposure times. Correct answer is C. Two times as much. All right, and that concludes the final video, video number 13 of the 2018 to 2022 Technician Class Amateur Radio Question Pool. I hope that these videos are useful for you for your studying. I would encourage you to review these videos several times until you're ready to take your test. And please feel free to share them with your friends. Subscribe so you're aware of any videos that we're releasing. 
One final reminder, these slides may be used for non-commercial use for amateur radio license preparation and amateur radio classes with reference to the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club as a developer. Please reference our website as well, www.claycountyradio.webs.com.